Hello. So, this video we are going to be talking about the various properties of inequalities. So, all of these properties are properties that you have almost certainly sort of seen before in other contexts, although you may not remember them by name. But they're relatively intuitive, at least for sort of the inequality situation that we're going to be talking about here. All right, so first up, inequalities are what we call transitive, which means that if we have some relationship like A is less than B and B is less than C, then that means that you can sort of use that B as a, as a sort of anchor middle and relate the other two pieces. So in this case, A is less than C. Okay, so basically the idea is that you can sort of move through B to get to C and relate A and C together. Uh, we're going to go through these sort of in general, sort of list the general properties, but then we're going to go through each of them and show examples. So if you're not quite following what I'm saying, don't worry, we'll sort of go through an example. Hopefully it'll be clearer there. All right, inequalities, they have this uh, sort of maintained by addition of a constant. So what that means is that as long as I'm adding the same thing to both sides, it doesn't mess with the inequality. So sort of just like equalities, right, where you can add stuff to both sides and it stays the same. Same thing here, okay? You can also add two inequalities together, although this one has a bit of a caveat that you have to make sure you do it very carefully, right? So here, if you have A less than B and C less than D, then you can sort of add these together but only so that the sign is going the same way, meaning that whichever one's on the smaller side, right, A is less than B, C is less than D, A and C are on the less than side, those are the ones that you can put together, right? And the B and D, they're on the sort of bigger side, so those are the ones that get put together, right? So if A is less than B, C is less than D, that means that A plus C is still less than B plus D. If you flip those, like you try to do A plus D or something like that, you've broken everything. You have no way of knowing if which way it's going to go, okay? So it's really important that you sort of keep track and make sure that the sign sort of lines up nicely. Last but not least, multiplication by a constant. This is the one that sort of sometimes throws people. So the idea here is that if you have some inequality, like A less than B, then that inequality stays the same when you multiply both sides by a number if that number is positive, right? So if I take something like 2 and multiply both sides, the inequality stays the same. If I grab something that is negative, then I still know what happens, but it flips the sign. So instead of having a less than sign, it becomes a greater than sign, okay? So multiplying both things by a positive, everything stays the same. Multiplying both things by a negative, the sign switches. And in fact, even though we know what happens in e each case, the fact that different things happen, this is something that's going to come up later as being a cause for frustration, especially when we're talking about absolute values and stuff later on. So a little bit of foreshadowing. <laughs> All right, so as promised, let's look at some actual like concrete examples here. So transitive, that's the thing that says, okay, if A is less than B and B is less than C, then I know that A is less than C. So an example here, right, if I know 1 is less than 2, I know, deep insight. I also know 2 is less than 3, still with the deep insight. But that means that because I have some middle thing that is the same, right, 1 is less than 2 and 2 is less than 3, I, I have 2 showing up in both of these cases, and my sign is going the same way, then that tells me that 1 is less than 3. Meaning I can sort of skip that two and go right to the ends for the other pieces, all right? So this is the, the transitive one. This is the part that lets us sort of go through one number to relate to other numbers, okay? Next up, we want to look at adding constants. So if I know, again, deep, deep insight here, one is less than five, but what that's telling me is that if I have some number, positive or negative, I can add it to both sides, say here's seven, right? So I can have... 7 get added to the left and to the right, and unsurprisingly, the inequality doesn't change, right? 8 is still less than 12. Okay, so that's, the, that's all this sort of addition of a constant is saying is that if you sort of make sure that you're doing it to both sides, you're all set. All right, adding inequalities together. This is the one that's sort of deceptively tricky, right? So I know that 2 is less than 8 and 3 is less than 5, so what that's telling me is I can add the both sides that are on the small side together and both sides that are on the large side together, 
And that gets me that 2 plus 3, right? Both of the smaller ones, 2 plus 3, should be less than, and then both of the bigger ones together, 8 plus 5. And indeed, 5 being less than 13. So depending on the actual values here, if you try to go the other direction, you'll get stuff that is very wrong. So be very careful when you're doing this that you're making sure to put the small stuff together, the big stuff together, and that the final inequality sort of reflects that idea, okay? All right, and last but not least, multiplying by this constant. So if I have some a less than b, so in this case, if I'm looking at, say, 3 less than 8, and I want to use some positive thing, right? I want to multiply both sides by a positive value, like, say, 4, right? So here I'm multiplying the left by 4 and the right by 4. That doesn't change the inequality. Indeed, 12 is still less than 32. Likewise, if I want to use a negative value, right? If I want to take that same a less than b, right? So 3 less than 8. But I want to use some negative number and multiply it. Well, multiplying by a negative, say a negative 2 on the left and the right, means that I have to flip this sign, right? So I go from less than to greater than. And indeed, if I do this out, I'm going to get negative 6, which is indeed bigger than negative 16. But again, when I say bigger, I don't mean magnitude. I mean to the right of, right? So that's if you look at sort of a number line, then you're going to have negative 6 is further right than negative 16. All right, so what do we do? Well, we sort of covered, officially speaking, the various properties of inequalities. And most of these things are things that you've seen before, but it's sort of good to nail them down sort of very explicitly here so that we're all on the same page. So things like transitivity, right, being able to go through some middle number to relate two different numbers. So that's the one less than two, two less than three, so one is less than three, that kind of thing. Uh, we can add constants to both sides, and in fact, that constant could be positive, negative, zero, doesn't matter. As long as it's sort of the same thing on both sides, it doesn't mess with the inequality. We can also uh, put the inequalities together, right? So we can say like, okay, if you have, you know, two less than five and three less than eight, we can put those pieces together as long as we're sort of careful with it and get five less than 13. And last but not least, multiplying. And this one comes up a lot. So it's sort of important to remember, right, that if you're multiplying by a positive on both sides, the inequality stays the same. Multiplying by a negative on both sides flips the inequality. Okay? So that is that.